Weight loss and fat loss are very complicated things and can be quite confusing. If you're looking for the best diets to follow this year, I've got news for you. All diets work. Like regardless of what you're doing, all diets work. Diets that have been practiced by thousands and thousands of people all over the world. People do post pictures of them being successful and all these things. Now obviously not all diets are created equal, but the one thing that all diets have in common is that they have plans and structure. And that is the key to fat loss or continuous fat loss and weight loss. We like to say fat loss nowadays and not weight loss because weight doesn't really matter. It all comes down to just getting more fit. Now the structure and plan like I talked about, if you're coming from a point in your life where you're not really counting your calories or you're not really conscious of the food you're eating, you're just basically having a good time and eating whatever you want. Once you apply a structure to that, meaning a diet plan where everything is weighed and everything is written down and you have a journal and you know what to eat and what not to eat, all of a sudden your total calorie consumption goes from whatever, huge question mark, to exactly just this. And that's why I'm saying that all diets work. As simple as that. Now once you've actually had that structure and plan, all you have to do is stay committed. It's as simple as that. You need to stick to it for three months. And when I say three months, I don't mean a month and then you cheated and you did a month again because each time you do cheat on whatever diet you're doing, then basically each time you cheat, you're starting over again. So try to stay consistent for three months. It doesn't matter if you fail, like it's not a problem. Everyone will fail and will have problems here and there. So it's important that each time you try again, you make sure that you're envisioning yourself staying committed to whatever eating plan you're gonna have or workout plan for that three months. That is so key. Just like with everything in life, it's about consistency and commitment. Now let's talk about one of the most famous ones. I'm particularly not really a fan of it, but a lot of people have been successful with it because it's one of the diets that is the tastiest because there's a lot of fat involved and people love to eat fat. It's the keto diet or the ketogenic diet. In its most basic form, it's basically a very high fat, low to moderate protein, and very low carb diet. You're basically looking at getting 75% of your total calories from fat, 20% from protein, and only 5% from carbohydrates. What you're trying to do is switch up where your body gets its energy source. Currently, it gets it from carbohydrates. Here, we want to produce ketones so that the ketones or the fat becomes your fuel. And the ketones will basically give you the energy just like how usually your carbohydrates give you energy to go through your day. The ketogenic diet has also had great success for lots of people in terms of lowering your blood sugar. Um, it can help some brain diseases as well. There's lots of studies and like with any diet, please make sure to research both the positives and the negatives so that you can come to your own conclusion because there will always be, just like with veganism and all that, experts on different sides. And why is that? You'll have a research paper from two top dietitians and nutritionists and doctors saying the opposite thing. So you think, but these doctors are so smart, why can't they come to the same conclusion? Well, it, it really depends on what they're researching, it depends on who's funding that research, where that vested interest is coming from, and ultimately what they believe in their personal opinion, all that mixed in with science. I'm not gonna speak here and pretend I can talk about these things, but all I can say is that make sure you get a balanced source of information to make your decisions. So what are ketones? Well, ketones are things that are usually usually produced in the liver um, when you're in a state of fasting or starvation. You might think, oh, I've never fasted in my life. Well, actually you do. You fast every night. Every time you sleep, you're not eating for eight hours and that can be considered a fast. While you're sleeping, your liver is actually producing ketones. So the diet basically just tries to replicate that whole process that you have during your fasting periods, but because you're replacing carbs with fat, then you're producing more ketones, putting your body in a state of ketosis. And that's exactly what you need to keep going. And that's why if you put even a little bit more carbs than you're supposed to, you can break that state of ketosis and the keto diet will not work for you. Here's a quick cheat sheet on foods you need to avoid while on keto. 
So basically any food that is high in carbs. So we're talking about sugary foods like soda, fruit juice, smoothies, cake, ice cream, candies, grains or starches, wheat-based products, rice, pasta, cereals, fruits, mostly all fruits, except small portions of berries like strawberries, beans or legumes, peas, kidney beans, lentils, chickpeas, root vegetables and tubers, potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, parsnips, etc. Low fat or diet products, because usually these are highly processed and often really high in carbs. Condiments and sauces, make sure to read the nutritional information because again, these can have sneaky ingredients in them. Unhealthy fats, uh, things like really heavily processed vegetable oils, mayonnaise, etc. Alcohol is a big no-no in this diet. Sugar-free diet foods, these are often also high in sugar alcohols which can trick your body out of ketosis. Now for the happy news, these are the things that you can eat on the keto diet. All meats are fair game, red meat, steak, ham, sausage, bacon, chicken, turkey, fatty fish such as salmon, trout, tuna, and mackerel, eggs, butter and cream, cheese, nuts and seeds, healthy oils, usually olive oil and coconut oil are probably some of my favorite ones to intake. Avocados, low carb veggies, lots of green veggies, tomatoes, onions, peppers, things like that. Very low in carb, but also very filling. And finally, some condiments you can use, salt, pepper, and spices are all fair game and good to go. When thinking about meat, what's really important, again, you're looking at higher fat content, right? This is a very fat heavy diet. So if you're gonna compare grass-fed beef to turkey, right? You're gonna have similar amounts of protein in terms of macronutrients, but one will be much higher in fat than the other because turkey is considered a high protein, moderate fat source, right? So if you're gonna have to eat more protein, the more turkey you need to eat to get the same levels of fat of that grass-fed steak, you're increasing your protein intake and decreasing your fat intake in terms of volume. So you have to be very careful in choosing your sources and make sure that everything you choose has really high fat levels because again, we wanna keep this really high in fat and moderate in protein. The first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is a really cool recipe using cauliflowers. Um, so this is gonna be one of the only recipes I'm gonna show you that is vegetable forward, um, but also keto. So break out the florets. Then we're gonna quickly steam this. You can also boil them if you want to. And we're just trying to get that nice and tender. The next recipe we're doing is also vegetable forward. We're just basically gonna be using some zucchini because one cup of zucchini is basically 2.41 net grams. So it is considered keto. Uh, so we're just gonna spiralize them and then use them kind of like in a pasta. Once our cauliflower is nicely steamed, take it out, throw the water out. In that same pan, we're gonna be adding some olive oil. Right now I'm eyeballing the olive oil, but if you're gonna do strict keto, you have to make sure to really actually measure it. So if it's one tablespoon or two tablespoon, etc. So at least you're taking note of everything you're eating in a journal. Some garlic. Add the cauliflower back in. To this, we will be adding some butter and some sour cream. Put that back on the stove, let it all come together. We're also gonna be adding a little bit of heavy cream. Season it with some salt and pepper, some garlic powder, and then some minced chives. Once all that's properly combined, we're gonna transfer it into something we can place in the oven. Grate some cheddar cheese and then just place that all over the cauliflower. That goes into the oven until ready. Next for our zucchini, all we're gonna do is chop up some garlic. So when you're on the keto diet, there are top six mistakes that a lot of people do make. The first mistake is taking in too much protein, which basically means that your body will start treating the protein like carbs and turn that into glucose, basically breaking your ketosis. Zest a little bit of lemon. In goes our zucchini, some sun-dried tomatoes, and your lemon zest. The second mistake is not having enough electrolytes. Your body will be flushing electrolytes like sodium. So you have to make sure that you have more sodium, potassium, and magnesium in your diet. And then in we go with Parmesan cheese. You can get this from foods that are rich in these micronutrients, but you can also just take supplements if you want to. And that's your first dish done. 
Third mistake is not reading food labels. Food manufacturers nowadays are so good in sneaking in different names for sugars and carbs and things like that. So before you reach for that low sugar uh, snack that you see in the supermarket aisle, make sure you switch it around, read the information that is on the back and check exactly how many percent of carbs that snack has. All right, let's try the zucchini. Look at that, perfectly cheesy. Beautiful, I should have cut the strands of zucchini, probably even better. Slurps like real pasta too, delicious. So you got our two vegetable dishes out of the way, now I'm gonna show you a very simple, quick preparation of how you can do a chicken dish. Uh, so we're gonna be doing a variation of a buttered chicken and then just kind of playing with it and messing around with it. So all we gotta do first is chop up some garlic. The fourth is what we call bad keto, or basically eating inflammatory foods. Mince up some ginger, some bacon, and then finally some chopped up chicken. At this point, we can add some spices. So we've got cumin, some garam masala. You can also use some curry powder and then some ground coriander. Not all of us are created equal, which means if I eat bacon and if you eat bacon, the effects of bacon on our bodies will be very different. For me, something like bacon, because it's so high in different kind of like seasonings and sodium and all these things and a lot of fat, it actually makes me bloat whether or not I am on the keto diet. So I would stay personally away from bacon, sausages, things that I know will just make me bloated. Once it's cooked down a little bit, we're gonna add in some crushed tomatoes, or some tomato sauce, just make sure you get the varieties with no sugar. I'm gonna add in my sun-dried tomatoes, our butter, just let that melt and let all that thicken. The fifth is eyeballing your macronutrients. Because the percentages are so clear and set in stone, you can't say, all right, I'm just gonna eat two whole, I don't know, steaks, and then three pieces of bacon, a pound of butter, um, some tomatoes, and call it a day because all those foods basically fall under the ketogenic diet. It doesn't work like that. You really need to kind of write it down, figure out what the macronutrient content is of each ingredient, and then figure out how that all comes in to your plan and how much of each macronutrient you're actually allowed to eat on a daily basis based on your calorie intake. Once your sauce is nice and thick, you can go ahead and add your heavy cream as well as as some unsweetened yogurt and just let all of that thicken up. And then finally, the last mistake is the continuous cheaters. People who basically um, keep breaking the diet here and there a little bit. Each time you eat about 100 grams of net carbs a day, you're basically breaking your ketosis. And again, as I said, this is only really successful if you keep it up for about three months. This looks like it's all ready to go, so we're gonna go ahead and transfer that to a nice plate here. The kitchen right now smells beautiful. We're gonna top all that with just some herbs that we're gonna chop up really quickly. I got some parsley and some basil. The big question everyone has is once you've done three or four months of keto and then you wanna transition back into healthy eating, is it possible? Will you put on all your weight back? Yes, you can put on a lot of weight back and fat back if you integrate carbs all of a sudden just in huge amounts and you go back to the way you were eating before you actually did the diet. So it's really important that if you wanna jump off keto for whatever reason you might have and you lost the fat that you wanted to lose, just really take it slowly and make sure you're still eating really healthy foods. Cauliflower is ready as well, so we'll go ahead and take that out. Nice and crusty exterior, exactly how we wanted it to be. Let's taste this chicken. Look at that oil. That's the fat you want. That is so good. The only thing that would make it better is a cup of white rice, but you can't have that if you're being keto, which is why it's great to serve it with something that feels starchy like cauliflower. Ha! Woo! Ooh, it's hot. Super creamy. That sour cream just adds that acidity you want. And that cheese, look at that. It's kind of all over the place. Look at those strands of cheese just falling apart. Absolutely beautiful. This is one of the reasons why keto attracts so many people because the food is actually really tasty and delicious. But remember, 
this keto diet might not be for you. So again, do the research, figure it out. As long as you're trying something new, as long as you're intaking less calories than you're actually spending in your day-to-day -day and in your workouts, a diet will work. Will this framework work for you? Only time and yourself can tell.